Hello and uh, welcome students uh, to lecture uh, third of business uh, organizational behavior in tourism and hospitality. Uh, my name is Yasser and uh, I'm your uh, tutor for today's session. Uh, this is a uh, third uh, session of organizational behavior in tourism and hospitality. And uh, the aim of this unit is to equip you with the knowledge and skills necessary to uh, critically assess the performance of an organization uh, within both its external environment and internal uh, success. Any questions and any uh, uh, concerns uh, before I start? Uh, can you see my screen uh, and can you hear my voice properly? Any issues? Okay, so performance within the hospitality. Uh, performance within the hospitality uh, 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 industry is a varied concept that includes various factors important for organizational success. Uh, these factors typically uh, revolve uh, around cost, time, and quality, collectively aiming to enhance uh, profitability and ultimately benefit stakeholders such as uh, shareholders. Uh, cost, time, quality in the context uh, in the context of hospitality operations, managing costs, optimizing uh, time efficiency, and ensuring uh, quality service uh, deliver are paramount. So cost management involves effectively uh, utilizing uh, resources while minimizing expects to uh, maximizing profitability. So this includes uh, uh, this include, uh, uh, includes controlling expenses related to labor, suppliers, uh, utilities, and other operational aspects. Uh, time management focuses on uh, streaming, uh, streamlining processes to enhance productivity and meet customer demands promptly. Uh, quality insurance involves maintaining a high, uh, you know, uh, uh, man, uh, you know, uh, uh, maintaining high standard in uh, service delivery accommodations food and overall uh, you know guest experiences all right uh, learning outcome uh, sorry uh, be able to critically assess the performance of an organizational in relation uh, to its external environment and uh, internal uh, structures uh, any question if anyone is there uh, okay uh, external environment, uh, external environment and internal structure assessing organizational uh, performance requires a comprehensive understanding of both and external uh, environment and internal structures. So the external uh, environment include factors such as market trends, uh, competitor analysis, economic conditions, regulatory framework and social influences. Uh, analyzing the uh, external environment allows organizations to identify opportunities and uh, threats, adopt to changing market dynamics, and capitalize on emerging trends. So, on the other hand, evaluating internal structures involves assessing organizational capabilities, resources, culture, leadership, and operational efficiency. So by critically analyzing both the external environment and internal structures, organizations can identify strengths and weaknesses, uh, uh, formulate uh, strategic initiatives and enhance overall performance. So any questions or any, uh, any question so far? Uh, just give me a second, students. Uh, yes. So, any questions so far? 
sorry, my internet is giving me some problems. So I was just, you know, that checking the uh, connection. Sorry. So uh, critically analyze the performance of a tourism or hospitality organization uh, using company and market data. So uh, sectors of the hospitality industry, uh, you know, travel, lodging, assembly and event management, restaurants and management, uh, managed service uh, recreations. Uh, travel and transportation uh, service involves airlines, cruise ships, railway coach operations, and, you know, car rental companies. Uh, lodging sector includes a variety of accommodation uh, options ranging from uh, traditional hotels and motels to boutique resorts and uh, vacation rentals. Uh, then we talk about assembly and event management uh, services involves planning, organization, organizing and uh, uh, exec uh, executing, executing uh, gatherings, conferences, uh, meetings and special events. Uh, restaurants and managed services, uh, the food and beverage sector, uh, you know, comprises restaurants, cafes, bars, uh, catering services and managed during facilities. Uh, then recreation and attractions uh, include a wide range of layer activities, entertainment venues and tourist, uh, you know, uh, attractions. <laughs> so next is uh, uh, factors influencing organizational uh, performance. So any comments if anyone is there? Okay, so uh, factors, uh, performance management is organizations is influenced by various factors that include uh, individual attributes, a uh, group of dynamics, organizational systems and structures. So as well as the uh, broader economic, physical and technological uh, environment, understanding these factors is essential for uh, effectively uh, managed performance and uh, driving organizational uh, success. Uh, any questions so far, if anyone is there? So performance management, uh, performance management uh, is a strategic process aimed to uh, develop individuals with uh, competence and commitment to enhance uh, shared objectives within organizations. Several definitions, several definitions uh, highlight uh, different aspects of performance management. Uh, Lockett defines performance management as the development to individuals with com uh, 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 competence and commitment, working towards the achievement of shared meaningful objectives within organizations that support and encourage their achievements. Uh, like, uh, you know, the Walter, uh, if you see here, describes uh, performance management as the process of directing and supporting employees to work as effectively and uh, 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 efficiently as possible. Uh, in the uh, line within the uh, need of the organization. Uh, Armstrong and Barron characterize uh, performance management as a strategic and uh, integrated approach to uh, delivering uh, sustained success to organizations by improving the performance of the people who work in uh, them and uh, by developing the uh, capabilities of teams and individuals contributions. Uh, any questions so far if anyone is there? Okay, so uh, Robert uh, uh, Robert Bexel uh, cites the, uh, you know, uh, following as a process that supports performance, man performance management. Uh, performance planning includes uh, employee goal setting and uh, objective setting ongoing. So performance communication, data gathering, uh, observations, and documentation performance 
appraisal, meetings, performance, diagnosis, and uh, coaching. So performance diagnosis and coaching uh, identify uh, performance gaps, diagnosis, uh, roots, causes, and providing coaching and uh, support are essential for helping employees uh, overcome challenges and improve their uh, effectiveness. <coughs> Uh, performance model is uh, based on the uh, work of, uh, you know, uh, WE uh, demand regarding uh, managing of quality improvement, uh, damings management cycle emphasize uh, continuous improvement through the plan, do, check, act, or PDCA uh, cycle performance uh, management models often, uh, you know, uh, uh, echo uh, damming uh, principles. So focusing on uh, setting objectives, implementing plans, monitoring performance, and making adjustment to uh, drive continuous improvement. Any questions so far, if anyone is there? Okay, so uh, next one is uh, performance model. You can see plan, do, uh, you know, plan, uh, review, monitor, and act. Oh, sorry, plan, act, uh, monitor, and then review. So performance uh, agreement, development planning, performance, and then uh, performance uh, review. Uh, ratios, uh, financial ratios for performance analysis. Uh, financial ratios are tools used by organizations to analyze their financial performance and make uh, you know, informed business decisions. So these ratios provide insight into various aspects of financial management, including profitability, liquidity, and financial positions. So some commonly used financial ratios, uh, you can see a, a profitability ratio, uh, you know, uh, then uh, return uh, profitability uh, ratio, then liquidity uh, under profitability, uh, things comes like a return on capital employed, return on total assets, uh, uh, equity, earning per share, gross profit percentage, expensive, uh, expense, revenue percentage, operating profit percentage. Uh, then uh, uh, basically uh, comes to the operating profit percent. If you talk about gross profit percentage, calculate the percentage of revenue uh, uh, retained after uh, deducting the cost of goods sold. Uh, expense revenue percentage measures the uh, proportion of expenses relative to totals. Operating profit percentage indicate the uh, percentage of revenue remaining after uh, deducting operating expenses. Uh, then uh, liquidity ratio. Uh, things comes under liquidity ratio uh, like current ratio. Uh, assess the ability of the organizations to meet short-term obligation or uh, using the current assets. Uh, then uh, quick ratio, quick ratio uh, uh, or asset task ratio measures the organization's uh, ability to cover immediate liabilities with the most liquid assets. Profitability uh, ratios, these financial ratios provide valuable insights into the organization's uh, financial health, uh, performance, and uh, efficiency, enabling managers to make informed decisions and implement strategies initiative effectively. Uh, any questions so far, if anyone is there? Uh, any question, if anyone is there? So uh, next one is uh, financial ratios for performance uh, analysis uh, continued. So uh, the next is uh, from the previous uh, lecture, let's discuss you know, deeper into financial ratios and used for performance analysis. Uh, inventory turn turnover measures how efficiently uh, inventory is being managed by the organization. <laughs> inventory holding period 
indicate the uh, you know average number of days inventory is held before being sold and then trade receivables then working capital size inventory days plus receivable days minus payable days uh, assets turn over assets revenue divided by total assets uh, is equal to uh, multiply by time so uh, Asset turnovers or net assets revenue divided by total assets minus liabilities is equal, uh, you know, divide, uh, multiply by times. Uh, financial positions, profit from operations, financial cost, uh, multiply by times and gearing uh, known uh, uh, current liabilities minus current liabilities, total uh, equity plus non current liabilities multiply by uh, times. Any questions so far? If anyone is there. Any question? Uh, just give me a second again, guys. Sorry about that. So any questions so far? Okay, so uh, next is, uh, he's talking about Holiday Inn. Uh, is a brand overview, Holiday Inn, everybody knows, a, you know, well-known hospitality brand offers a diverse range of hotels, uh, options, uh, catering to various travelers' preferences and, uh, you know, uh, needs. So the brand profit, uh, of uh, portfolio including uh, both uh, main strips and upscales uh, segments. So each uh, offering unique experiences and uh, uh, amenities to guests. Uh, Holiday, anybody uh, knows about uh, so Holiday Inn uh, financial performance. Anybody aware of uh, Holiday in financial uh, uh, performance? Anybody can tell me? Okay, Holiday Inn perf uh, financial performance provides insights into the brand uh, revenue, uh, uh, you know, generations, profitability and growth uh, trajectory. So key financial metrics for Holiday Inn includes total revenue in the specified period, a uh, holiday in uh, generated total revenue amount of uh, you know 4337 million dollars uh, representing a 6.4 percent increase in compare, compared to the previous year uh, then uh, operating profit uh, which is 816 millions uh, reflecting a significant increase of 7.7 percent .7, uh, uh, then uh, revenue from, uh, you know, reportable uh, segments, uh, which is 1,933 million, in, uh, in indicating uh, robust growth of 11.7% uh, compared to the previous year. Uh, next is uh, gross revenue. Uh, gross revenue, uh, Holiday Inn contributed to the overall gross revenue of intercontinental hotel groups uh, uh, with total gross revenue reaching 27 point, uh, you know, 7 billions, making a 6.6% increase compared to the previous year. Then operating profit $566 million, which represented a decrease of 22.3% compared to the previous year. And finally, Underlying fee revenue growth uh, uh, was reported at 6.5%, uh, including an improvement compared to the previous year's growth rate of 4.5%. Uh, uh, 
7%. So these financial figures provide a snapshot of holidays performance in uh, terms of revenue ge uh, generations, profitability and contribution uh, to the overall performance of uh, intercontinental uh, hotel. Right, any questions so far? Okay, so our business uh, model. So holiday in business model uh, predominantly uh, revolves around uh, franchising its brand and, uh, you know, managing hotels on behalf of third party owners. Uh, as an assets lights businesses, holiday in focuses on a uh, growing fee revenue and a fee margin while minimizing capital requirements. So the, the key components of holiday in business model, including uh, franchised hotel, uh, 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 basically, Holiday Inn operates a vast network of finance, franchised hotel totaling uh, 4,615 properties uh, with 576,979 rooms. So, franchised hotel allows third party owners to uh, leverage the uh, Holiday Inn brands and operating expertise while maintaining ownership of the uh, uh, pro property. Then, in addition to franchised hotel, Holiday Inn manages a portfolio of 965 hotels comprising uh, more than 253 uh, hotel rooms. So many uh, uh, managed hotels uh, involves direct management by Holiday Inn. So where the company assumes operational responsibilities on behalf of the property owners, uh, leased and owned uh, hotels, uh, 23 properties with 5,996 uh, 5, rooms. These owned and leased properties provide additional revenue streams uh, and opportunities for strategic investment and development. Any questions so far? Right. Uh, here is a financial highlights and operating overview. Uh, we will examine the financial performance and operating highlights of Holiday Inn, a prominent a player in the hospitality industry. So if you look at financial highlights, total revenue, holiday and total revenue is uh, 4,337 4, uh, million dollars, um, marking a decrease of 6.4 compared to the previous year's revenue of 4,075 millions. So revenue from uh, reportable uh, segments, uh, again, 19, uh, 1,933 million reflect, reflecting a decline of 11.7% uh, compared to the previous year's revenue of uh, 1,730 million. Operating profit, which is 566 million, uh, showing decrease of 22.3% operating profit from uh, reportable segments, which is 816 million dollar. Uh, indicating a decrease of 7.7% compared to the previous uh, operating profit of $758 million. A gross revenue uh, IHG system, uh, Holiday Inn contributed to the overall gross revenue of Intercontinental Hotel Group uh, or IHG with total gross revenue reaching $27.4 billion. Uh, which represented a 6.6% increase compared to the previous year. So operating overview uh, business model, Holiday Inn uh, predominantly operates through, uh, you know, franchising its brand and managing hotels on behalf of third party owners, as I said, uh, you know, previously as well. So uh, here uh, you can see, uh, a gross matrix and future pipeline of hotel uh, uh, holiday in so uh, shedding uh, light on its expansion strategies and marketing positioning a uh, growth matrix underlying fee revenue growth holiday in's underlying fee revenue growth uh, stood at 6.5% indicated and important compared to the uh, previous year's growth rate of 4.7% uh, total underlying operating profit growth, uh, underlying operating profit growth was uh, $47 million, uh, 
representing a decrease of 6.2% compared to the previous years. Operating profit uh, is of $556 million. Uh, revenue per uh, available room growth, revenue per available room growth reached 23%, including an increase in revenue uh, generated per uh, available room compared to the previous year's growth of uh, 12%. So basically, these growth metrics and pipelines insights uh, demonstrate Holiday Inn's commitment to expanding its footprint, uh, enhancing uh, enhancing uh, revenue, uh, you know, uh, streams, and capitalizing on emerging market opportunities uh, to drive future growth and profitability. Uh, look, segmentation income, it, it's like activity. You are tasked with analyzing income segmentations, which involves categorizing revenue streams based on various factors, such as geographic regions, customer segments, product lines, or uh, service offerings. So by discuss, uh, uh, dissecting, uh, uh, citing income source, into distinct segments, you can gain insight into revenue composition, performance drivers, and market dynamics, uh, enabling them to identify growth opportunities, uh, mitigate risks, and formulate strategic recommendations for optimizing revenue uh, generation and enhancing business uh, performance. Uh, next is, uh, any questions so far? Any issue? I recommend and justify how a tourism or hospitality organizations can modify its structure or objectives or to increase its profitability. So the concept of customer direct businesses where customers purchase goods or uh, services direct from the businesses, typically a retailer or manufacturing. So this business model is uh, prevalent in various industries, including retail, manufacturing and services. So even Entities like government can adopt like, uh, you know, this model when providing goods or services uh, directly to uh, customers. For example, a government offering services directly to a citizen uh, fits into the customer direct business model in the context of the hospitality industry. Businesses may adopt this model to self room, uh, rooms, meetings, spaces or other services directly to uh, consumers. Uh, this explains the significance of identifying consumer direct businesses, indicating by uh, value of uh, B2C in the store table, a uh, stereotype uh, uh, column uh, highlighting the uh, in importance of uh, understanding different businesses models and their uh, implications. Any uh, questions so far, if anyone is there? Hello? Hello? Anyone is there? Can you hear my voice and can you see my screen if anyone is there? Okay, so next one is a hotel group uh, sales strategy. Uh, this strategy uh, may require an uh, overhaul of, uh, you know, uh, your normal marketing and uh, sale approach. The idea is uh, to sell rooms and meeting spaces to corporate group. It is important you can offer a deal for uh, uh, both. So, uh, basically, uh, uh, successfully implementing uh, this strategy in necessitates in innovation and proactive uh, engagement with corporate event planners, uh, establishing uh, direct connection with planners is highlighting lighted as the most cost effective method. Uh, for securing group booking. So by fostering direct relationships, hotels can better understand uh, the specific requirements and preferences of corporate clients uh, in, and increasing the likelihood of securing uh, booking. Any uh, like segment, he's talking about seg uh, segment as well, uh, or segment your target audience a segmentation of the target audience is identified as an important aspect of the strategy. So by identifying and understanding different type of corporate group and their specific needs, hotels can tailor their offering and promotional of effort accordingly. So this targeted approach allow hotels to make compelling uh, offers that uh, resonate with the uh, you know preferences and requirements of different groups. 
thereby increasing the likelihood of uh, securing booking and uh, fostering long-term relationship with corporate clients. Uh, direct booking are uh, deemed most uh, beneficial for hotel operation as they uh, generate uh, higher revenue without commissions uh, paid to agents or distributions uh, partner. So to implement a direct booking strategy effectively, hotel managers are advised to invest in an online booking system that integrates uh, seamlessly uh, with their websites uh, uh, their websites uh, and uh, property management uh, system. Additionally, prioritizing social media strategies is recommended to increase visibility and uh, attract guests to book directly through the hotel's online channels. Uh, this emphasizes the importance of uh, leveraging uh, technology and digital platforms to uh, streamline booking process and enhance uh, revenue uh, generation uh, generation of for hotels. Uh, destinations marketing sales strategy. This type of sales strategy required requires a hotel operator to make with the other tourism business professionals in their destinations to promote the region as a whole. Okay, so businesses. Uh, uh, teams up to target key inbound tourism markets and uh, drive traffic to the uh, journal area. So by working together, businesses can uh, leverage their combined resources and uh, network to create more impactful marketing initiatives, uh, ultimately benefiting the entire destinations and boosting tourism related activities. A cross-promotional sales strategy, hotel managers are advised to identify and assess various uh, large events happening in the local region throughout the year. So once identified, hotels can uh, devise promotional uh, campaigns that uh, coincide with uh, these events, aiming to capitalize on the increase uh, in, in influx of visitors attending these events, examples of events suitable for the uh, approach, including industry conferences, concept or major sporting events. A guest reward sales strategy, particularly uh, catering to the preference of modern travelers, including the uh, influential uh, millennial uh, ge generations, guest rewards, uh, program offers an opportunity for hotels to uh, incentivize loyalty and encourage repeat business. So hotel managers are uh, encouraged to uh, develop uh, uh, comprehensive reward systems that incentivize, uh, incentivize guests for various actions such as uh, 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 frequent stays, purchasing upgrades, and referring friends and family members. Uh, revenue management uh, sales strategy. Uh, so the focus is on revenue management strategies employed by hotels to maximize room uh, bookings throughout the year, regardless of the type, typical travel traffic at any given time. So revenue management plans involves adjusting room uh, rates based on demand uh, fluctuations, aiming to optimize revenue per available room. Uh, during low season uh, periods, hotel operators may lower room rates to stimulate booking and fill uh, occupancy. Uh, conversely, during high traffic times when demand in the higher hotels can capitalize on guest willingness to pay higher rate by a uh, uh, rising uh, price. So thereby generating increased revenue per available room, the approach allows hotels to adopt their pricing strategies dynamically to market conditions, ensuring a consistent level of business and revenue uh, generation uh, across different seasons. The room selling techniques in hotel. Right. Uh, hotels can employ to increase revenue, uh, you know, selling techniques that hotels can employ to increase revenue and optimize guest experience. So these techniques include upselling uh, where guests are offered more expensive uh, version of services or products they are purchasing with a focus on uh, uh, you know uh, daily safety and awareness 
uh, del sorry, delicacy and uh, awareness rather than aggressive sales tactics. So remo uh, remarketing strategies uh, allows hotel to uh, reconnect with the potential guests who have visited uh, their website but not finalized their booking, providing opportunities to encourage them to complete their uh, reservations. So these tactics aims to enhance guest engagement and increase con uh, you know, conver conversion rates by offering prioritized recommendations and uh, reminders tailored to guest preferences and behavior. Uh, incentive cross or uh, cross selling uh, such as free additional services or product can uh, incentivize guests to confirm their booking. So while cross selling offers supplementary product or services to com uh, you know complement the guest primary purchase, uh, enhancing the overall guest experience, establishing a partnership with the uh, uh, build local uh, partnership. So established a uh, partnership with local businesses and attraction allows hotels to uh, leverage mutual promotional opportunities, expanding their uh, reach and attracting more guests through collaborative marketing effective. So additionally, uh, ensuring a seamless uh, and uh, user-friendly booking experiences uh, on the hotel's website is emphasized as critical for facilitating direct booking uh, and maximizing conversion rates. A well-designed website with clear calls to action uh, can significantly uh, influence guests' booking decisions and enhance overall customer satisfaction. Hierarchy describes the management structure of business. Uh, So uh, basically, this refers to the management structures uh, deline uh, delineating the, uh, you know, defining the levels of, uh, you know, authority from the highest position, such as the uh, managing director to the lower uh, uh, tiers of the organizational structure. So this hierarchy is a typical represented visually through a, an organization's chart providing a clear uh, uh, deep, uh, deep, uh, deep, uh, deep, deep depiction of the chain of the command and reporting a uh, relationship within the organization. So understanding of the RAK is important for employees to comprehend the uh, lines of authority, decision making process and their uh, respective roles and responsibilities within the organizations. Uh, again, organizational structure, you can see here, uh, including which include the manner in which uh, you know individuals are organized with the organizations uh, these structures outline how various department uh, how various uh, department teams and individuals are arranged and uh, coordinated to achieve organizational objective uh, effectively any questions so far if anyone is there. Right, so type, tall type organizational uh, structure and flat type organizational structure. Uh, we discussed uh, this uh, in our previous lecture as well. Uh, a tall organizational structure is categorized by multiple hierarchical uh, levels resulting in a significant number of management managerial layers and a uh, narrow span of control. Uh, conversely, a flat organizational structure uh, features fewer hierarchical levels, resulting in a shorter chain of command and, uh, you know, broader span of control. Uh, each structure has uh, its advantages and disadvantages, uh, impacting factors such as communications, decision makings, and organizational, uh, uh, you know, uh, agility. Span of control uh, is referred to the number of, uh, you know, subordinates or employees uh, directly uh, supervised by a manager or supervisor. So a narrow span of control indicates a smaller number of direct reports, allowing for closer supervision and more personalized attention. Uh, 
uh, in contrast a wide span of control entails a large number of direct reports uh, leading to gear autonomy and effect efficiency so determining the appropriate uh, appropriate uh, span of control is important of optimizing uh, manager managerial effectiveness and organizational uh, performance any questions so far if anyone is there uh, here is talking about chain of command direction of information structures communication and the line of uh, authority within a business uh, basically chain of command refers to the flow in from flow of information instructions and authority within a business so this chain uh, you know uh, delineates the lines of authority and communications channel establishing the formal hierarchy of decision making and accountability within the organization understanding the chain of uh, command is essential for maintaining clarity uh, coherence and accountability in organizational process and operations responsibility the process that you are responsible to and who you are responsible for like here you can say a uh, structures several layers under manage, managing director manager then many employee employees or and employees so Here, uh, de-layering the level of organizational are called de-layering, uh, which involves the removed of one or more layers from the organizational structures or organizational layers represent the hierarchical levels within the organizations and de-layering aims to streamline the structure by eliminating unnecessary, uh, you know, bureaucratic layers uh, or higher management layers. So the process is often undertaken to increase uh, efficiency, include uh, cost and enhance agility, ag agility uh, within the organization. So de-layering requires careful consideration of the impact on communications, channels, decision making, process and employee, uh, employee morale. A uh, type of organizational uh, structure with many uh, level is called any uh, comments on this if anyone is there so commonly referred to uh, you know uh, with many levels is called uh, uh, you know tall structures so these structures features numerous hierarchical layers resulting in a significant number of managerial levels between the uh, top relationship and front line employees so tall structures often entail narrow span of control uh, with each manager overseeing a smaller number of uh, subordinates, while tall uh, structures often uh, offer clear lines of authority and special specializations that they can also result in bureaucratic influences and slow decisions making uh, process. Then fewer organization structure with fewer, as we discussed uh, uh, before as well, uh, flat. Uh, structure these structures feature a limited number of hierarchical layers resulting in a shorter chain of command and broader span of control how many people controlled by uh, managers so obviously is there are no certain limits in 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 common but the appropriate span of control depends on various factors including the nature of work managerial capabilities and organizational goals so manager with a narrow span of control supervises a smaller number of subordinates uh, allowing for closer uh, you know closer supervision and more supervised attention so while those with a wide span of control oversee a large number of subordinates promoting uh, efficiency and uh, autonomy our uh, direction of, of information and uh, instructions uh this highlighting the importance of clear communication channels and a well-defined chain of command information and instructions few vertically and uh, horizontally uh, within the organization 
uh, following established reports, relationships, and communications pathways. Effective communication is essential for ensuring that messages are uh, conveyed uh, accurately. Uh, decisions are implemented uh, efficiently and organizational goals are uh, achieved. Uh, then uh, now we revisit the accountability uh, structures within the organizational illustrating the uh, reporting relationship between employees, managers, and the managing director. These hierarchical structures uh, depict the following responsibility and authority within the organization, emphasizing uh, the importance of clarity and coherence in accountability uh, frameworks. Where one or more layers are removed, a uh, delaying involves the removal of one or more layers from the organizational structures, often undertaken to streamline uh, operations, reduce hierarchy, and uh, increase efficiency. So basically, by eliminating unnecessary layers, organizations can enhance agility, decision making, speed, and employee empowerment. Uh, here is a video of uh, capacity management and increased profitability. I just tried to uh, turn on, but I, I think so there is some um, issue can't do it. But basically, I can explain you uh, capacity utilization uh, uh, refers uh, to the context to which a company utilizes its available resources to meet demand effectively, maximizing uh, capacity utilization is important for enhancing uh, operational efficiency, reducing costs, and increasing profitability. So that's it for today. Our references, organizational behavior for layers, uh, service, uh, Conrad Lashley and Darren uh, Leroux's books. You can uh, read uh, and you can get some material uh, uh, on your uh, learning management system or uh, Moodle. Uh, it's available there. So yeah, that's it for today. And uh, if there is any question, concerns or issue, you can drop me an email at yasir at ukversity.co.uk uh, .com. And thank you very much for today uh, joining me. And uh, uh, I hopefully I'll see you uh, uh, next uh, Thursday at five o'clock. Uh, thank you very much uh, for today and uh, have a good weekend and bye for now.